Hi everybody, I'm Scott and first of all, this is a microphone. It's very loud in here. That's why the weird ass microphone. Um, it's all the computers behind me. Anyway, this is the Hoppy 9800. 9800, right? Yeah, well the HP 9800 by Hoppy. Um, I don't really know what that means or why it's Hoppy, but I think that's the brand and HP 9800 is the model number. Now what this is, is an energy saving lamps tester. And who doesn't need one of those, am I right? It does more than just test lamps, as we'll see, but basically it's a power meter that uh, will tell you, well, all sorts of things. Let's open this box. This came from AliExpress, by the way. Um, beautiful little manual here. And you can see a picture of the power monitor in the front. And actually, let me just show it to you. Ah get to the accessories in a moment but it comes in this lovely plastic bag as all nice things do and it also looks like it has ooh yeah it has that uh pl protective plastic coating oh yeah that's fun so here it is it's a very simple operation this plug goes into an electrical outlet and then you plug whatever you want into here and this looks weird to, well, I was going to say to my American friends, but this should look weird to pretty much anyone, because this is a quite universal power socket that can take US-style plugs, can take UK plugs, European plugs, Chinese plugs, which are pretty much the same as American plugs without the ground pin, um, all sorts of crazy stuff. And whatever you plug into it, it will give you all sorts of measurements. For example, the current power factor voltage frequency not frequency, but frequency, the power in watts, and the annual power consumption in kilowatt hours, which uh, may or may not be useful. One of the things with this is, for the kilowatt hour power consumption, you're supposed to leave this plugged in. Oh, my nail's broken. So that it can sort of monitor the power of the device that's, that's plugged into it. I'll show you why shortly, but I don't know that I'd trust the electrical safety of this, that I'd want this plugged in for any extended period of time, especially unsupervised. Oh, let's take a look at the back. So we can see, again, HP 9800, AC 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. Now, I mean, this theoretically should just be plugged into 120 volts with this plug, but I'm guessing, uh, based on the fact this has a screw on it, and it's clearly just a add-on plug, that this can be used in multiple countries just with a different uh, set of prongs on there. 20 amp maximum. Um, I'm dubious of that. In fact, let's see. Uh, this cord is labeled, which it's not always but it is labeled in metric only, of course, which makes sense. It's from China. Cable is probably made in China. Um, it's 1.5 millimeters square. But based on the thickness of this, I don't even know that it's 14 gauge approximately. Um, I would say this would be at best for 15 amps. I don't know that I'd use it for 20 amps, um, especially in the home, especially if plugged in for an extended period of time. Now, I'm going to show you why, before I even power this thing on, why the electrical safety on this is suspect at best. On the back, it has a door. And it looks like it's a door that perhaps is for batteries or perhaps for a, a fuse or something. And uh, if we open this door, which it just has this little latch, you slide it to the side, and then if you get a fingernail under there, you can just open the back door. And what is in this brilliant back door? Why? Live electrical connections, of course. Uh, just double check this is not plugged in. I always double check before I poke my fingers in something like this. Um, this is the live and neutral of this receptacle. So in fact, whatever voltage and uh, well, whatever potential amperage you can have before an overcurrent device uh, knocks out the power, whatever is going to this is what's accessible at these two terminals. So if this was in operation and this door you know, came off, you took it off because you were curious or it fell off, whatever, um, and you accidentally touched one of those, you could have a really, really bad day. Um, also, it's not very reassuring that, if you can see, um, this ground wire is just sort of tacked on to this terminal. It's not like fed through it and then soldered on. Um, it's fine. It's just not, not the best connection. And also, uh, these solder joints look a little dry. They're not exactly shiny and new looking, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, not... Uh, all inspiring. One other electrical safety issue about this is that it has these two terminals right here. They're speaker terminals. 
Um, they're not rated for any kind of line voltage or uh, any kind of significant amperage for that matter. But basically you can stick two wires in here for a device you want to test and hook up. And uh, whatever you plug into those will operate at line voltage. So whatever's coming in here will come out there. Besides that being horrendously unsafe because you can easily put a wire like part of the way into here and have the uh, live conductor sort of sticking out and able to touch it really easily. Like there's absolutely no safety in that uh, regard. But even assuming you know what you're doing, that seems pretty safe. If you hadn't taken the back compartment off here, you wouldn't know that this is fed by two extremely thin wires. I don't even know what gauge that is, but I would say that is good for maybe, ooh, two amps, three amps max. I guess they'd act like fuses. I mean, so how bad can you do with that? I'd rather see a real fuse, though, because really you shouldn't uh, be running the full 20 amps if this is rated through these terminals. I mean, like I said, you shouldn't really be running 20 amps through this entire thing, but... Yeah, so that's why I find this whole thing suspect, is the easy access to uh, electrocute yourself in the back here. Almost like they willfully want you to do that, like it's a Darwin test or something. Um, maybe it's the way of thinning the herd. But uh, either way, you know, even for someone who would perhaps know that that's horribly unsafe, like myself, like I said, the door could still fall off while I'm, you know, holding it. I mean, it doesn't seem all that well made. Now, you might be surprised to learn that I have a twin of this thing. Ah, why do I have two? Well, that's an interesting story. And I'll tell you that in a second. I gotta get one more of those thingies. That wasn't a very good transition. But anyway, um, let me make some room. So, okay, I actually have three of these. And this one we'll use to explore the interior, interior of this device a little more. But uh, this is faulty. I actually only bought one of these originally. And I, in, my in the process of testing it, I tacked two leads on to the LED display here. And I thought I had it wired correctly on a common, like a negative rail, and then a uh, positive, like the power that feeds one particular LED segment. Turns out I did not... Either that or this entire thing, even the low voltage circuitry, is referenced to mains voltage. And so, to my great surprise, when I hooked this up to my oscilloscope, um, one of these two legs hit ground. And uh, it actually, I'll show a clip, well, let me show it first here. It blew the front off of this chip. You can't really see, let me show you a clip of that happening. Right, no, not the best video, but... Anyway, sparked that shot off the front, and then this whole thing stopped working because obviously that chip is fairly important. Now, it didn't pop the fuse, and it still will pass current, but the entire display and the entire purpose of this device is, uh, well, completely negated by that exploded chip. And not that you asked, but the reason I bought this in the first place and was doing this test was for a future video, which should be out by the time you see this. No, maybe not. It's for a future video, so like subscribe or whatever. Um, about filming or recording these type of displays. So, for example, like, if you look at this right now, very flickery. See what I mean? Like, it's, it's flashing at you. It doesn't look like that in real life. In real life, the LEDs look solid and very stable. Unless you go like this. If I go like this in front of my eyes, then it looks um, broken up. Y you can tell if something's uh, overly flickery by doing this. Anyway, point being, that's a subject for another video. And it's going to be how to make this look good on camera. And there is a way. And so, in that uh, vein, I was trying to figure out the frequency of updating of each of these LED segments using an oscilloscope, but sadly, that blew this up. Due to my own incompetence, perhaps, but uh, also I have a feeling it was a reference to, the, uh, to line voltage, and yeah, that just blew the whole thing up. Um, did not blow up my oscilloscope, fortunately. So, anyway... This is for demonstration purposes. We'll take this, well, rather than take it apart, I think uh, we can look at this one. But I will show you how one of these opens. Not this one, because it's live. But again, these are both identical on the back. They both have this weird compartment that opens up for no apparent reason. One difference, unplug this, that I will note, is this one here has sort of a standard molded plug on the end. Um, no screw on it, as one would expect with this sort of plug. This one, however, has a screw and a very flimsy feeling plug, very cheap plastic, and not very well secured, no strain relief on it either. I'm not a fan of this plug. Uh, it just feels very wobbly. 
So I much prefer this, and it's a crapshoot because I got these from two different AliExpress sellers. But honestly, I can't remember which was which, so uh, if you go and order one, you never know what you'll end up with. Um, actually, to satisfy my own curiosity, and this may not interest any of you at all, I'm going to see what the inside of this plug looks like. Because it might be good advice to change out this plug with a non-shitty plug if this is shitty. I immediately do not like this plug. Um, you can see right there, very, very dry solder joint. Like, I mean, extremely dry. The brown wire is just sort of like tucked up over this uh, little lip, whatever you call it, and then it does not go into that hole. Now that hole is threaded, so presumably this could have screw connections, but I don't know. If I were them, I would have ran this wire the way I did, but then also pushed it down that hole and just blobbed some solder in there too. It would have given a better mechanical connection because all of these joints look extremely dry. Yeah, not uh, not my favorite, but at least the ground wire is hooked up. That's uh, not always the case in some of these Chinese products that are not really, uh, you know, UL listed or EU listed or any other kind of listing. I mean, maybe they're listed in China. Um, I do not read Chinese, but perhaps someone could tell me if that says it's uh, extensively tested and listed somewhere. I mean, it says IEC, ANSI, JIS, meh. Honestly, I, I doubt that means anything. I mean, obviously, those letters mean something, but uh, I don't think they mean anything as far as the uh, stringency to which this is held, as far as testing goes. Uh, English, I can master it. So, yeah, not happy about the plug. This molded, whoa, this molded plug looks fine. Who knows what it's like on the inside, because it's uh, molded. But at least with the plastic being molded over everything, even if one of the connections could be a little loose theoretically, like this will really hold it firmly. The problem with this is, like, as you wiggle this, like since there's no strain relief, as you just wiggle this connector or even pull it out of the wall like you're not supposed to, um, that over time could crack these joints completely and the wires could just fall right off or get a very loose connection and um, cause a little bit of a meltdown. So, uh, yeah, not exactly uh, confidence sparring hoppy. Get on the bus to uh, quality. That's not a phrase. I always like uh, English manuals that come from China. Shenzhen Hopi, Hopi, who knows? Electronic Technology Company Limited. Hmm. By mark of quality. So, it is a basic location and function of each part. There's nothing amazing there. Um, it lists some things that, like, I don't know, maybe you don't need to list. Like, for example, number 10 is label. And you see it correlates to number 10 there, which is indeed where the label is. Uh, rear cover is helpfully pointed out, although we really shouldn't even have a rear cover nor access it. I can only assume that this exact case is used for something else, perhaps a battery-operated device, which has, uh, you know, batteries in the, under this, which would be perfectly safe and desirable. Cause it's a pretty easy-to-open compartment. Um, and, you know, this hole is probably uh, bunged off or just never cut out to begin with. Nonetheless, we're left with a death trap. AC power cord, 20 amp, 250 volt max. Again, I am dubious of that. Ooh, I just noticed something else. My apologies for jumping around. Um, while I was reading that, I looked at this cord. This cord says three conductors times 1.0 millimeters squared. Whereas this one, if you recall, said 1.5 millimeters squared. Now, I would guess that, you know, they look the same size. That doesn't really mean anything as far as the size of the conductors. But, maybe this one's a little thicker, but it doesn't seem that much thicker. Um, but let me tell you, cable thickness does not indicate conductor thickness at all. Actually, I should clarify that. Um, jacket thickness, or, or cable thickness, does not indicate the size of the conductors. They could be smaller than what the jacket would indicate. They cannot be larger than what the jacket would indicate. So, for example, this looks close to a 16-gauge, like, standard computer cord. This looks like it could theoretically be 14 gauge. That's if you're in the U.S. Again, 1.5 millimeter squared versus 1 millimeter squared. Any who's it. So that's uh, kind of worrying in the first place that these are both rated at 20 amps theoretically and they have two different uh, thicknesses of flex. Not uh, confidence, inspire. confidence inspiring. Now, here's something I didn't discuss and I'm not going to. It says USB to serial COM port optional. Now, None of these three devices have a USB port. They all have a hole for USB port, and at least one of them on the listing on AliExpress 
said it had a USB port and was USB compatible. None of these do. In fact, even the one I took apart, this is where the USB port should be. There is no USB port there. There's space for it, there are solder pads for it, but it is absent. So we move along. Now this does have operating instruction, and actually the English on here isn't too bad. I shouldn't make fun of it too much, although they do say annul power consumption, which, you know, not really. Obviously it means annual. And so the menu and key they're talking about is right here. That's a button. It doesn't really look like a button. It looks more like a symbol for like a ground, but not a grounding symbol. I don't know. It looks like just a, a symbol or something, but in fact, it is a button. And I can evidence that for you here. It correlates to this very long button that one can press. And that does some fancy yet not very interesting things. Um, you can set an alarm for the upper limit of power and the hours for the annual power consumption. You can set the display content, clear electrical power data and load time. That's uh, if you've been monitoring something with this, then you can clear it and start monitoring something new. Um, and we'll automatically store... Ah, let's read this. It will automatically store the current operation as long as not as long as you not to press the key for more than 3s, which I assume is seconds. So uh, if you press it for 3 seconds, I assume that clears it. Even though it just says long press, long press. Eh, whatever. Again, I'm not too concerned with that aspect of its functionality because I would not leave this plugged in unattended for an extended period of time. You can see when it starts up, let me just show you that again, although I'm sure you saw it and don't really need to see again. Model number, power rating. HP 9800 and 20 amps. So now it's powered on, you can see the current is zero because nothing is hooked up to it, so it's not drawing any current. Power factor is zero for the same reason. Voltage, 120.4 volts. Now, I'm interested, actually, I'm going to plug this other meter, if I can get the cord unfurled, into the same power strip. And of course, the same power supply, same message comes up. And I just want to see if they correlate, and they do. 120.3 volts and 60.03 hertz, or frequency. Um, of course, zero watts and zero annual power consumption. So I am going to compare these two just to see if uh, there's variances in tolerances. It's Seems pretty good so far. I'm actually impressed with that. So let me get something to plug into these. Uh, I'll be right back. And I'm back. I got light bulbs. Why did I get light bulbs? Because the hoppy meter conveniently comes with accessories. This box I cast aside so uh, swiftly. That's it by the... Oh, no, wait, that's not it. There's one more thing. Ugh. This looks dangerous as hell, but I'll get to this in a second. All right, what have we here? Well, a lot of bubble wrap, which comes off quite readily. We, What we have here is quite simply a very, very cheap feeling lamp holder and an adapter for a different size bulb. Uh, I should know what size thread that is. It's a common thread here in the US. It's for like the uh, smaller decorative lamps usually. Um, that looks like brass. I kind of doubt it's brass. It doesn't have that brassy kind of feel or patina, but it is uh, sort of brassy gold colored. Interesting. Uh, and this is probably just aluminum on the outside. This is very light, so I can't imagine steel or any kind of uh, significant alloy. And the lamp holder itself uh, is not even the kind with the full metal base. It just has one, ooh, that's not pointed at the camera. It just has one springy contact at the bottom and one tiny little contact on the side. And the threads are plastic. But, oh, and I should also point out, one more adapter came with it, and this is for the uh, bayonet-style lamps, um, which are fairly common in the U.S. This actually feels like it has a ceramic base to it that's stuck into this uh, plastic casing. In fact, why not go all Big Clive and take this to bits just to see what's in here? Because I did not expect that to be ceramic. And just to make this less visually interesting. I'm going to move that manual out of the way. Screws come out. And unlike Big Clive, I do not have any kind of needle nose pliers or anything standing by, or crocodile pliers? Whatever you guys call them. Ah, fuck. Oh, I'm not supposed to curse. Wait, I mean, that's the thing about uh, YouTube. Like, a lot of people don't curse on it. 
You ever notice that? And I think it's because they're trying to stay safe for the a advertisers. There we go. Um, but I, I say fuck it. Like, you know, we're all adults. And if you're not an adult, then you probably have said fuck anyway. So what do you care? Uh, but I digress. So first of all, this is this little uh, receptacle here is rated at 250 volts, 2 amps. And uh, it is made of, it definitely, I think it's made of ceramic anyway. Um, let me... See, that's the uh, ceramic, and that's the plastic. And obviously that's for uh, heat protection, although this will still get pretty hot, and it's in a very cheap-feeling plastic thingy, so I don't know. But anyway, it's very simple inside. There's two leads that go up to each of these two terminals in here, and then those just go down to the base of this fixture. Not fixture, this adapter. And uh, obviously one side goes straight down the middle, which you can see there, to uh, this contact, and then the other one goes to the outside to the exterior contact, and I don't know how it's bonded to that. I'm guessing it's just kind of stuck on there, but, you know, a friction fit, like, crimped onto it. But uh, that's going to be the extent of my exploration, because I also don't really care. This isn't very important. What is important right now is this lamp holder. And this also, like, not only does the lamp holder feel cheap, but the entire cord feels cheap. This one says it's two conductors at 0 0.75 millimeters squared. Um, for us Americans, that is... Thank you, me from the future, for including that. Um, but it feels very cheap. I mean, besides, with these kind of cheap-ass cables from no-name manufacturers... Oh, wait, this one's actually labeled in uh, American Wire Gauge. It's 18 gauge. Hmm. Who knew? Okay, yeah, this this is, um, this could be reasonably called 18 gauge, so I don't think that's necessarily false. Anyway, back to the hoppy. Now, I can plug the lamp holder into here, so, as I said, this funny looking socket is a universal power socket. This is actually a Chinese plug. No holes there. Otherwise, pretty much the same as an American plug. I think it has different, um, slightly different pin widths, but ever so slightly. So, plug that in, hope it doesn't, uh, shock me and uh in honor of big clive who uh from whom this meter comes i mean well he's the one that inspired me to get the meter i don't know how i was supposed to phrase that but that's what i'm trying to say so uh this is a nice pink bulb uh you can see it is drawing 3.112 watts of power let me zoom in there 0 0.42 amps, a power factor of 6, which is probably pretty typical. I'm guessing there's like a little switch mode power supply in here. Don't know, not taken apart, we'll never know. Uh, voltage is now 119.4. I don't think that's because the lamp caused the voltage drop. That would be silly, right? Yeah, that would mean extremely thin conductors somewhere inside of this or outside of this. Um, that's probably a voltage drop caused by something in my basement turning on perhaps an air conditioner. By the way... It's uh, December 30th here in New York. I didn't check the temperature, but it's probably like 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. And I have two air conditioners running because I'm an idiot. And it's like 77 degrees Fahrenheit here in the basement. Yeah. Hence the power bill, which is out of hand right now. Like, absolutely insane. So, ah, you can see the voltage has even gone down further, 118.7. But I think I just heard an air conditioner kick on, so... That's fun. And uh, we can see annual power consumption is sort of hovering around 9 kilowatt hours. So that's estimating how much, how many kilowatt hours it's going to use per year if you left this plugged in all the time. Now, presumably, if we did this on a partial duty cycle, if I now left this off for a period of time... Oh, it just reads zero. That's weird. What if the load is an intermittent load? And when it's off should calculate that. So if I leave this off for like, let's say, a minute, but if it's averaging out, it should... So it's, a, it's just an instantaneous annual power consumption meter. Huh, interesting. And not very helpful, because with simple multiplication... Oh, no, wait. No, 9.0. With simple multiplication, one can figure out if one, this was left on constantly, how much power it would consume over the course of a year based on these other readings... But what would really be interesting is if it actually, you know, logged the power and got an average usage of power so that if this was off for 50% of time, 
on for the other 50%. Instead of reading 9, it should read 4.5 because it'll be half duty cycle. But since it doesn't do that, this is very, uh, this annual power consumption thing is fairly useless. Um, yeah. And by the way, you can also have this display as we discussed before. Or maybe I didn't discuss in any detail. Um, yeah, where is it? Annual power consumption, annual CO2 consumption, or annual electricity costs, or as I said, annul electricity costs. Um, sure, I guess you could program in your electrical rates and the amount of CO2 that the power plant near you gives off for any amount of power produced. I'm a little suspect of the annu annual CO2 rating. Like, how do they know? And what are you going to program into this? This is nonsense. I mean, there's a bunch of things you can set, and you can press this button a whole mess of times. And just all this button does is change the annual power consumption portion of the display. And this. I, I don't know. I'm looking at the instructions. I don't, I don't even know what I'm changing. Um, I also don't care. Because, like I said, this, this isn't that useful. Um, I think that might be the cost. I think I just entered it whatever you know what I don't, I don't even give a shit because it's useless because it's just like instantaneous reading so you could just plug in your load turn it on and do a very quick calculation on your phone using the current or the wattage rather and just multiply it by the number of hours in the day i mean i, I don't know oh but as far as like general accuracy goes let's see well, at least how accurate these meters are to each other uh, this lamp is rated... Now, the lamp rating doesn't necessarily mean shit, but it's rated for 3 watts or 46 milliamps. So this is reading 42 milliamps, that's close enough, and 3.057 watts. Now, unlike a lot of the lamps Big Clive takes apart, these are the Sunlight brand lamps. Um, I find these to be pretty good. Um, no flicker, very reliable, good color. I would recommend them. They sell them on Amazon. And uh, as you can see, they're actually quite uh, accurate as far as their power rating, which uh, Big Clive often finds not to be the case. So, yeah. And let me see if we get uh, 0 0.042, so 42 milliamps, and 3.052 watts. 3.057 and 42 milliamps. So, yeah, it's close enough. I mean, I don't really find have a problem with that as far as accuracy goes. Um, if you need supreme accuracy, you know, use a proper... Uh, multi, you know, well-made multimeter. And just for uh, further testing, I will now try a compact fluorescent in blue, which is rated 24 watts. Now that's 24 watts when it's heated up and it's at full current. So, uh, yeah, that could take a little while, which uh, this video is long enough as it is. So, 17.44 and 240 milliamps as it's going up. Power factor is six, about the same as the pink bulb. Probably has a similar, it have a similar power supply. I actually should take these apart, but that's something for another video. As you can see, it's sort of like warming up and it's gradually uh, creeping up the tube. So really quickly, I'm gonna change this. So 18.69, 18.97, it could feasibly have gone that to uh, 19.04. 19.49, yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. I mean, it's kind of a bad test because obviously it doesn't reach its full rating yet, but uh, I'm actually going to unscrew this before it gets too hot. And we'll do the final old school test of a 100 watt incandescent bulb, which should be a power factor of unity or one, and will reach its full power consumption nearly instantaneously, although there is no such thing as instantaneous. Okay, this is blinding the camera. I'm just going to hold it out of the way a bit. And this is actually taking 103.2 watts, which is about its rating. Current 8, uh, 0.863 amps. And power factor is perfect at 1, which is actually quite good. Ah, my frequency... Oh, my frequency just fluctuated a little bit. Okay, so, yeah, 103.2 watts, 0.863... 103.1 watts, 0.8, so, nope, there it goes, so it's fluctuating, so this one's like on the edge, but anyway, I'm pretty satisfied, let me turn that off before it gets too hot and melts this cheap plastic fitting, which uh, I really don't know that this would withstand that kind of heat, yeesh, ow, shit, fuck, 
see, this is what I mean about cursing on YouTube. Like, there's a time and a place, and when touching a very hot light bulb, that seems like a good time to curse. Maybe you disagree. Leave your opinions in the comments so I can ignore them there, too. Anywho, one other thing I want to check is this is going to seem fairly magical. So, as some of you may know or may have heard from my accent, I live in the United States. Oh, wait, I did say I live in New York just earlier. And also, I mean, these do say 119 volts at 60 hertz. So, I mean, you could guess what kind of power system I'm on. And uh, I already told you where I'm from. So, it's worth 60 hertz. Now, let's say I want to do something a bit magical here and just compare these uh, as if I was uh, not in the United States, for example. Somewhere strange and alarming. Well, not alarming. Alarming if you suddenly appeared there for no reason. Um, which we're about to. I'll plug this meter back in. You can see it starts up in the usual fashion. And now it's 121.4 volts at 49.97 hertz. Which is, in years makes no difference, 50 hertz. What witchcraft, huh? Now, I'll one-up that. Let's say this meter, which is currently at 118.9 volts, 60 hertz. I'm going to unplug that and do something else magical, which is now it should power up. Oh, it would help if I turned it on. Now it should power up and 240 volts, 241 volts at 60.03 hertz. Wow, amazing. Now it doesn't look like I'm in the United States at all. I'm at some... Uh, 120 volts at 50 hertz and 240 volts at 60 hertz. How weird. Now, 240 volts is easily explained, uh, and in fact, it's explained in a previous video about 240 volts here in the United States. And as for this one, 120 volts at 50 hertz is actually being supplied by a power inverter hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. And that power inverter has a selector switch for 60 or 50 hertz. The weird thing is it doesn't have a selector switch for 120 or 240 volts, which would be nice for running stuff from, like, the United Kingdom and Europe, where it's 200 to 20, 240 volts, depending on where you are exactly, and uh, 50 hertz. But, uh, you know, for demonstration purposes and for running certain 50 hertz equipment that will run at multiple voltages, that's uh, kind of a cool solution. And as you can see, this is... Now this, I will not be plugging 240 volts. That would probably just explode this light bulb or burn out the circuitry at any rate, because it's only rated for 120 volts, but plug it into 50 hertz and it works no problem. No flicker or anything. So uh, yeah, these bulbs are great. Um, now, because I don't fancy these meters as being particularly safe, and as I manipulate them, I'm going to unplug them, especially the one at uh, a toasty 240 volts, which is actually on well, I was going to say it's on a 30 amp breaker, but it's actually on a 30 amp breaker upstream. But I have a uh, power strip, which I have to unplug like this, which has a 15 amp breaker in it. Uh, oh, 10 amp breaker. Even better. Even safer. Ha <laughs> ha. Safety. Not really. And let's take a look at this final accessory, which I glossed over very quickly earlier. Now, again, we have to remember. The hoppy meter is, well, here, hmm, ah, well, they just showed me to be an idiot. Here it says handheld power meter. Nope, I'm still wrong. So here it says handheld power monitor, whereas on the box, if you recall initially, it says energy savings lamps tester. Hmm. Now, it clearly is intended to be a lamps tester primarily because it comes with all this lamp testing equipment, which by equipment, I mean a bunch of, like, shitty adapters. But it also comes with this, which is for a type of lamp. I am honestly not sure what type of lamp. Um, halogen, I guess. No, this was way too cheap, a shitty plastic. I was going to say fluorescent, but it would have to have a built-in ballast. You can't just hook it up to uh, line voltage. Well, maybe you can. Anyway, let me undo these. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Need a wider shot for this. Okay, so well, I guess these are for fluorescent fixtures of some kind. But again, no ballast. Maybe just for testing the fittings? I mean, testing the bulbs? Because obviously this one, very short wire. Meh. This one, very long wire. I would say about a meter on a longer one. And maybe, ooh, 10 centimeters? 
How does metric work? I don't know. I'm American. This is like 12 inches, which is definitely not 10 centimeters. I'm not that stupid. Well, I'm pretty stupid. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, if you know what these are for, I mean, look, obviously, see these ends with these very, very, very tiny conductors. Mm hmm. Are probably meant to go into these very, very dangerous speaker terminals. And, uh, like so, and like so, I presume. And you're probably supposed to double them up, maybe? If anyone really knows this for sure, um, leave a comment for everyone else's benefit. I'm gonna look it up. Oh, maybe I'll put the results here on screen. So, I think you're, you're probably supposed to be doing, like, mm, probably supposed to do this and then hook them up to either end of a of a lamp hmm yes I've never quite seen anything like this before um, it does look like the sockets for for a fluorescent fitting but uh, yeesh anyway regardless of what it's for it's really cheap like I mean the conductors are tiny which if it's a very low current draw bulb then it's fine um, but this plastic is also very flimsy feeling um, because of a screw, though, maybe one of you is curious to see what's inside of here. It's not going to be interesting. It's going to basically be these two wires going to these two, um, again, they look like brass or copper. They're probably not terminals. Oh, okay, the screw came out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so, uh, very straightforward. Um, it's just each of those wires goes up to each of these terminals. Fun. And, uh, again, very flimsy feeling. So, I wouldn't trust that to, you know, not electrocute me as I was holding it. Because remember, I guess you're supposed to be, like, holding this as you apply it to the lamp with maybe voltage applied, and there's not much in the way of insulation. I mean, like, it's very thin plastic if it's cracked. Uh, probably not going to kill you if you're careful, but, uh, you know, not fun. I hope that answered your questions that you probably didn't have in the first place because maybe you've never seen this or maybe you already saw it on Big Clive's channel and he covered it much more thoroughly than I did. Um, although I don't think he really... Got, no, he did get into depth in this in one video. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this look at the Hopi or Hopi power meter from Hopi Shenzhen Electronic Technology Co. Limited. I had it memorized. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button that everyone's been talking about. And uh, like the video. Or don't. I mean, it's, it's up to you. It's, it's, you know, YouTube. Anyone can do whatever they want. Um, I'd appreciate the subscribing. I mean, that's fun. It makes me look cool if I have more subscribers. But whatever. I don't know. I'm kind of tired. It's legitimately... What time is it? It's 3.20 in the morning here, so... You know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Good morning. Oh, God. Um, I forgot to open this up for you. I mean, this was already open, but uh, I just want to show you how the Hoppy made... This is like an epilogue. This is cool. Um, like, the video's over, but now there's more video. I mean, if you enjoyed the video, this is, like, super awesome. But if you hated the video, then I don't know why you're still watching. This is just going to annoy you even more. Help if my hands were like this so you could see what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Unscrewing. So there's six screws on the back of this. As you could probably tell from my vigorous screwing action. Well, unscrewing action. And, uh, yip, 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 yip. Almost there. Okay. Aha! There's the screws. They're all identical, which is always nice. And they chew through the plastic. They're not into any kind of metal grommets or whatever the fuck they call them. So, uh, yes. Very simple. Let's see how similar it is. Oh, it's not exactly the same as the other one. Interesting. The uh, transformer, or choke, I'm assuming it's transformer, probably to power low voltage circuitry. Switch mode power supply, I guess? Because it does have a tiny looking... Uh, switch mode power supply -y type chip on the front there. But I don't know! Hmm. Let's see, it has a crystal oscillator. 4.096 kilohertz? Probably not megahertz. It's probably kilohertz. Now, I don't know if that's 
that's probably used as a reference for the uh, power frequency on the uh, frequency indicator. If you can see that, that's glare on the frequency indicator. Um, it's probably also used for the timing of the actual LED driver circuitry. And what else do we have here? So, on the back, um, current shunt fuse, which is always nice. Now, whether that's a real fuse or not, I don't know. That would be a test for another day, but I also don't want to ruin these because I have no replacement fuses that would fit there. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, also, minor difference. I'm, just, I'm always surprised how different these things are because, you know, from, if from the outside they look identical, but they're clearly two different manufacturing runs or maybe they're ripoffs of each other. I don't know. But, um, no, interestingly, the model number on the circuit board is the same as the model number on the box, which isn't always the case. That means this probably is the same company making these. And all the boxes did look identical. See different colored screws on this uh, plug here, on this socket, rather. And, weirdly, this wire here is soldered from the sort of rear of the board up into the front, whereas this one is soldered from the front, uh, sorry, from the rear of the board to the front, I got my fronts and backs confused. You know what I mean. This one comes up like this. This one goes down like that. Hmm. And uh, same with this red wire here, which is stripped back pretty far. And this one also comes from the bottom. And wow, that has almost no solder on it whatsoever. Wow. Kind of just stuck in there, huh? Uh, but then the uh, blue and brown wires are soldered from the front on both of these. So just a couple of minor weird differences. Uh, this brown wire has its... Jacket insulation a bit chafed from being up against this thing, the socket. Um, also interesting, two capacitors down here, one capacitor here, a position for a capacitor that is not filled, but on this one, that capacitor position is filled, but both have an empty position for a capacitor here. I wonder what that's for. Any differences in the front? that we might be interested in. I really don't even know if you're interested in this. This is going to kind of ramble on as if the rest of the video didn't ramble on. Yeesh. Okay, so um, this was the connection, I think. Nope, that is not the connection with no solder on it. This is the connection with no solder coming through the front. Um, as you can see, there's a decent blob of solder here. These are, by the way, um, these red wires are solid conductor wires. Whereas the uh, wires coming in off the power flex look like they're mm, aluminum. It's hard to tell if it's the solder coloring the wire or like... I don't know. I'm going to guess they're aluminum because uh, they don't feel that heavy. So this is the original one where I blew the front off the chip. This one actually has the same chip. No, it's a little bit different. A little bit different packaging as far as like the letters on it, but... It looks like the same uh, model number and everything. Um, ooh, very different down here in this corner. You see we have a lot of components here, and uh, it's been streamlined on this board. Maybe this is a later revision, because it's not like uh, it's not like this one's missing components and there are places for those components. Like, the uh, actual board is different. So that's interesting. Oh, unless they just spread all these components out up here. Because, like, here, no, there's, like, a Zener diode there on this one that's not even present on this one. And, actually, this package is here on this one, and there's a position for it, and it's not there. Huh. Very strange. Are the crystals the same? I'm going to stick my head in here for a second. Sorry. 4.096. Hmm. Yeah, so the crystals are the same. Oh, this one has two crystals! What? How did I not notice that? The other crystal is... 22.1184. Hmm. Is that a time reference? Because it does... Well, it does calculate kilowatt hours, but it does that, does that through a... Like, simple bullshit math. I'll take close-ups of both of these boards, and I will post them to... I'll show them here briefly, as you are seeing right now. And I'll post them to my website, which... Ooh! Brings me back to the other thing I should have said in the outro. Visit my website at s.co.tt. Wait, I did that backwards. Visit my website at s.co.tt. Eh, that's a real uh, domain name. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Got really lucky with that one, honestly. Slight differences. Um, 
some differences in quality as well, just as far as like the solder joints go and quality of the uh, connectors on the cables. It's kind of a mixed bag, I guess. You don't know what you're going to get. And like I said, more components on one than the other and components in different places. I don't know which design is better. I mean, I'm assuming they improved the design between one and the other, but I don't know which is the newer one. Oh, no, I do. I lied. I am very stupid and not paying attention at all. Okay, so the original one that I blew the front of the chip off of has a version number on the board of 3.2. And this is the one with the extra capacitor. No, that's missing a capacitor on the back, my apologies. And with this huge cluster of components there, and this one with the fewer components here, and the extra capacitor on the back is version 3.4. Oops, version 3.4. Sorry, I was uh, had that out of shot. So presumably this is the updated latest and greatest. Uh, one other thing I should note is that this apparently has the facility to have three buttons. Um, only yeesh, that one button is uh, present. But in theory, there could be more than one button, more than one buttons accessible through the case. However, I don't really see where you could put more than that one button on this board, because lining up with those holes is not really any open positions on this board. So presumably this case, again, could be used with something else or for something else. I'd be interested to know what that is. If anyone's seen these kind of cases for any other devices, uh, please let me know. So anyway, uh, I think that is actually it for the video. It's been a very, very long video. It's been recording for an hour now. I don't know how much that's going to work out to when I edit this shit together. Probably still a pretty long fucking time. Uh, if you stuck through it this far, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for doing it. I appreciate it. And I will see you for the next video. Is that a special effect? It was, right? Okay, this, there's no one there. <laughs> there's no one there. It's just me. All alone. As usual. As we all are in the end. Well, good night.